we are back on this fine, fine Wednesday. All right, come on in the room. I am just putting the title here. Good to see you here. Oh. I am getting used to this thing. All right, wisdom from the mother archetype. That's what we're talking about today. So, yesterday we talked about navigating conflict, how that may show up. If you have a dominant maiden archetype and how that may show up out of alignment. So today we are talking about the mother archetype. If you missed that live after this one, just check the page. It's there. All right. So we're going to get right into it. So... Just a recap of yesterday, we talked about navigating conflict, the importance of recognizing that conflict is normal, it's healthy if we learn how to navigate through it. Um, our behavior and our posture in the midst of conflict is really what's significant, what really determines our experience in this world as we continue to cultivate relationships with one another. I didn't like the color. That's a little better. Yeah. All right. It's cool. <laughs> so today we'll be talking about the mother archetype. And when the mother archetype is in balance, the mother archetype is nurturing. She's caring, uh, compassionate. She knows how to hold space. For herself as well as others she's big womb energy she's big bosom energy she's like come here let me let me love on you but it comes from a full place like it overflows you know like because she knows how to mother herself she knows how to provide what she needs so she overflows she gives herself in a standing therefore she knows how to overflow you know she knows how to reflect that and share that with others However, when the mother energy is out of alignment, especially when it comes to navigating conflict, the mother energy might go outside of herself to try to appease. This could look like enabling. So really just taking on too much emotional labor. Like she, she carrying stuff that ain't even hers. She trying to get in the brain of the person, she thinking for the person, like really, really coddling the person and enabling them to be in their behaviors. Like she really just, it's not hers, yet she's taking it on, right? And I think as women in society, we, especially women of color, like we're taught to carry, you know, for everybody. We're, we're taught to be the the martyr and the you know, self-sacrificer and that that is noble and and it's not. I'm here to tell you that it's not. So typically a mother archetype might attract partners that are emotionally immature. And she becomes in turn the fixer. So she finds herself trying to fix others. Like I said, taking on too much emotional labor, you know, and she might even try to hold her boundary. But then in order to smooth over the conflict, in order to create a false harmony, she might just concede with the other person just to kind of get the argument over with. Um, like, is this really out of alignment? 
energy that is under the disguise of caring or under the sky the disguise of compassion but you're not showing yourself any compassion because you lack boundaries you're not holding your own boundaries you're not checking in and honoring how you feel in the situation you're only trying to appease the other person and this can look like so we hear about the different trauma responses, right? We mostly hear about fight, flight, and freeze. Sometimes we don't even hear about freeze, we hear about fight and flight. But there's also freeze and there's fawn. And fawn is when you start to appease the other person in order to feel safe. Like you start to maybe overcompensate, you know, in order to feel safe. And I'm here to tell you that if this is your experience, if this is resonating with you on any level, that you got some healing to do. And that's okay. Like, that's absolutely okay. And you're not the only one who has this experience. Um, this typically will show up if someone had a childhood where they had to be a parent really early in life. So they learn that their worth and their assignment in this world is to nurture others but it also is at a deficit of nurturing themselves um, this can also come from having neglectful parents so you learn that you aren't important your needs aren't important um, your emotions aren't important so this is a time to learn to remother yourself to learn to tune into your womb wisdom to see what you need because this archetype out of alignment, this behavior creates a undernourished womb. It creates a depleted womb. So in order to bring yourself back into balance, you have to learn in the face of conflict how to hold your boundaries you got to learn what's yours and what isn't and that requires you to get really grounded within yourself and start to really ask yourself like I said reparent yourself what are my needs how am I feeling in this moment what do I need like while I'm out here appeasing others to try to smooth things over what is it that my soul in my emotions, like what is it that I need? What is my body telling me, right? Like, do you need to take a moment? Do you need a cup of hot tea? Do you need some mother wort, you know, to, to help with your heart and to feel nourished? Like, what do you need? That is the main question to ask. Like, what do I need in this situation? Another thing is to recognize that anytime that you create disharmony within yourself in order to create harmony within a situation in order to yeah create harmony it's not harmony it's a false sense of harmony because all you're doing is creating chaos within yourself your cells will learn to distrust you and therefore you won't trust yourself it's like it's a relationship you're always in a relationship with yourself so you got to find the balance of nourishing and caring for yourself, caring for your emotional world, your feelings, what it is that you want before you try to appease others. Because a relationship, like I said yesterday, is it's a give and take. It's, a, it's an equal exchange. So if you are just giving yourself away, in order to feel needed. I would say tune in with your worthy wounds. Tune in with your sense of worth outside of appeasing others because sometimes that guilt may show up. That guilt may show up when you try to set boundaries for yourself. That guilt might show up when you choose to not carry on someone else's emotional baggage because it's a posture that you've held for so long. So I really encourage you to tune into your, to your womb space. 
And you can take a moment and place your hands in the face of conflict. Say, hold up, I need a minute. And ground yourself. Place your hands on your womb. And breathe in that nourishing energy. Allow the energy of the cosmic mother to permeate every cell of your being. To fill your womb with nourishing energy. And ask for clarity to see what is yours and what isn't. What is yours and what isn't? And how can I use my voice to speak up for myself? And how can I set proper boundaries that are coming from a place of love while still allowing myself to keep my heart open and be compassionate? This is what you ask. You ask for the clarity. So, if this resonates with you, hmm, ashe, sister. <laughs> so, if this resonates with you and you find yourself out of alignment in the mother energy and you would like to explore a little bit more deeply, then join me in my Radiant Recovery Coaching Program. It is a six week journey with different tools and activities as well as we'll have one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you to see where you are out of alignment and what practices we need to do and incorporate what practices do you need to bring into your life or maybe release in order to bring you into alignment and if you just want to know which archetype is leading your journey right now then click the link in my bio to take the quiz. It's a quick quiz, eight question quiz, and it will help you gain more clarity about where you are and which archetype is mostly guiding your journey. Because I think it's important to realize that we shouldn't categorize ourselves and put ourselves in boxes because we are the all. However, there are at different points of our life dominant energies or dominant elements or dominant archetypes that are like basically ruling the show or running the show and so we can work with those archetypes in order to create harmony within ourselves within our lives and to transform and blossom and bloom into the powerful radiant goddesses that we are so, like I said, if you are interested in learning more, click the link in my bio, take the quiz, and I look forward to working with you more deeply. Catch me tomorrow. I'll be on here, and we'll be going into the Enchantress archetype and what she has to say about how we manage conflict. Well, you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for all who have tuned in today. I trust that this message touches you where it needs to. And if it does, and if you feel like there's someone else this may be for, share it. Share it out. Pass it on. Let this be the gift that keeps on giving. All right, y'all. I'm hungry, so I'm about to go nourish myself. Peace of love. Mwah. <laughs>